Next we have Fran, president of TTP. Thank you. Hey, Brazos County. Uh, Howdy. 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 I'm Fran Rhodes, I'm president of True Texas Project, and I'm down from Fort Worth where I live to visit y'all. I was here with you on your very first meeting back in August, and I haven't been back since, so I'm really excited about being here, especially with all these candidates in the room tonight. Um, it's a great opportunity for you to meet these people that you might not get otherwise. I know I don't usually meet all state red candidates until a few years ago, so it's pretty exciting. Are you excited about what you just saw in that video? Yeah. <laughs> we have a lot going on. I hope that you are taking advantage of all of it. One thing they didn't tell you about because it's just recently developed at, at our Texas Tech Gala on April 23rd during that Saturday morning and the Friday night before, we are going to offer four of the five certified true Texan classes right there in the same area as, as the venue for the game. So you'll have an opportunity to pick up all four classes if you want, or maybe just one or two, whatever you want to do. So anyway, thank you so much for having me here tonight. Thank you for being here tonight. Uh, I'll be around after the meeting. If y'all have any questions for me, I would love to talk to you. Thanks. All right, first we're gonna have local candidates. I know we have a couple of you to come line up over here. Our local candidates come out at the beginning of the meeting. They have 30 seconds to pitch themselves and then uh, move on to the next one. to be here. I'm John Harvey Slocum and it, I'm just it's a blessing to be here in front of a conservative crowd and you guys deserve conservative leadership. I can tell by the guys around the room that we're surrounded by that and it's an awesome feeling. I want you to know that I'm excited about the opportunity to lead District 14, represent our community and our state in Austin. It's time to stand up for the BS that we've been fed from the Biden administration. Yeah. It's time to secure our borders and, and not talk about it, but secure it. And I'll add that it's time to have conservative leadership that votes conservative and doesn't just call themselves conservative. So thank you for being here. Thank you for the opportunity. I look forward to meeting each one of you. We will always have an open door policy. So please reach out whenever you can. I'm Chuck Howard. I was a three-time Bryan City Councilman. I decreased the tax rate two times there, two times as county commissioner in a short time that I served after the death of Catalina last year. I'm running, running for, I'm running for county commissioner again. I would like to continue to lower tax rates. However, that's nothing if we don't get these out-of-control appraisals and under-control in Austin. So I'll be working with my state reps, potentially that guy, and, uh, and, and lowering or getting a hold of these appraisal values, getting them under control, and continuing to expand our economy here in Great Rises County. Visual. This is me, Roy Green, class of 81. I was a uh, Roswell Air Commander. Shout out to Frank Cox over there, head down leader, some time ago. And he said that Texas AM, the spirit of Aggie Land is the Holy Spirit. And he said that in a muster. I'm here to say I'm running for county court at Walmart to Brazos County. I will be fair. I'll be firm. I will follow the law. Thank you. Thank you. I encourage the candidates to hang out afterwards and ask me a question to get to know them a little better. We have uh, two last minute additions. Scott Walker and Tom Slocum. Scott Walker is going to go first. You each have three minutes. Where's Scott? All right, you each have three minutes. Hello, I am Scott Walker. I'm Judge Scott Walker. I have some signs over there. Please get one. I don't want to carry all these signs down the stairs. 
the brochures are on your table. And let me tell you this, I've been a judge on the court now for over five years. We have six years terms. It's been five of the greatest years of my life. I've really enjoyed it. I really feel blessed. I feel strongly that God was involved in my election back then, and God's involved in it now. I will say this, when I became a judge and took the oath of office, I swore to defend and protect the constitutions of this state in the United States, and that's what I do at my job all the time. But I also have been a Christian for a long time. My wife and I, we spend, we try to pray and read the Bible together at least, we try to do it twice a day, but like today I left at five o'clock this morning and she didn't want to get up that early. So. <laughs> but I will say this, right after being elected, we did what we call a Bible flip opened the Bible, and it opened to Amos 5.15. And I was like, this must be a mistake. I don't know. This is, this is all about bad stuff. But 5.15 says, hate evil, love good, and maintain justice in the courts. I was shocked because that's my real job. That's what, that's what God tells me to do. And that's what I try to do with every vote that I make and every opinion that I write. And I will, of course, follow my oath to Texas and the United States Constitution, but I'm gonna follow my oath to God. Let me say this, I was surprised when I got here and we started this meeting with a, a prayer circle over here. That was awesome, I appreciate that. Um, also, we'll say that, um, I think my opponent, I know he's here, he's gonna tell you that, that I don't write enough opinions and our court is way behind. And I'll say this, we, we have the busiest court, probably one of the two or three busiest appellate courts in the whole United States. We have about, there's nine judges, we have about 30 lawyers that work for us, and I don't know how many non-lawyers but we are very busy. COVID has put us behind, but we're not way behind. We don't need fixing. We're just going to catch up. Hopefully in the next year, we should be totally caught up. Also, um, I don't write as many opinions as some judges, and that's because I'm not an activist judge, and I won't be an activist judge. I'm not going to compromise my beliefs just to get an opinion out of you. Thank you. Thank you. Howdy. I am a Texas Aggie class of 2005, and I am running to be your next railroad commissioner here in the state of Texas. This is a statewide office. Let me tell you why I'm running. Um, we all remember the freeze last year. There was a, a tax that people call securitization. I guess that's the dirty Republican word for tax, but that's what happened to everyone. It's on your natural gas bill quickly. You need to pay attention to that. That should have been paid out of the $15.8 billion record amount of money that was delivered to Austin from oil and gas. Usually it's 11 billion or 12 billion. Could have easily been paid out of that, but they broke themselves a check for $3.4 billion, just like Rahm Emanuel. Never let a crisis go to waste. They took advantage of it and they taxed Texans. That happened at the Railroad Commission. They voted on it, all right? That, that happened as a real thing. Okay, uh, number two. What else is happening that's a real thing? Right now, there's a lawsuit in Midland. There's a group of people, Republicans, that are suing a group called the High Roller Club. They're suing the Railroad Commission for this permit. Christy Craddock was a no vote on this permit. The same group is seeking uh, a permit for a landfill in East Texas right now. They have donated a large sum of money to my incumbent in this race, the guy I'm running against right here. Um, over $155,000 went to uh, his his campaign account. And so make up it what you will. Uh, I I don't want to sit here and say anything else except you need to do your homework on this one big time. And the second thing, I'll, or the third thing I'll say that's really important here is that today I was just endorsed by the Texas Federation of Republican Women former president, Ms. Carolyn King Hodges. That's no joke. That's one of the most powerful women in the state of Texas in politics. She endorsed me today on video. 
I think that speaks volumes. All right, there's a lot of things that are going on here that need to change. I'm all about integrity. I'm all about doing the right thing at the right time. I don't want CNN down here with cameras interviewing Republicans, interviewing GOP chairmen, asking them what's going on here in our backyard and why can't we do a better job? And why are all these people mad? We can't have that. We have to do a better job and we have to restore fiscal responsibility to Austin. That means if something's going on in Austin and needs to change, I'm gonna be there. I'm gonna say this is not right. It's one more thing that I got a big bone to pick with in the state of Texas is these windmill companies. All this stuff's made in China and it's subsidized by us. And guess what? Every time they put one up, we're having to pay for low or no bonding right at the county level. It's not right. It needs to be at the statewide level because if you do things at the county level, it invites corruption. These wind companies can go there, they can write checks to judges, to county officials, and the next thing you know, they get lowered to bonding. That has to change. As soon as I announce that I'm going against these people, I start getting attacked by wind lobbyists from Boston that live in Austin, and they write checks to Republicans, okay? They write checks to Republicans because they want little to no bonding for their wind farms. I am going to be the strongest fighter, the strongest defender of oil and gas that you will ever find. And I know how to pass legislation as well to work on that. So don't let my inexperience fool you. I've got the endorsements behind me of oil and gas and the Republican women. I appreciate your vote. Go to sloganfortexas.com, find out more. You obviously know the Slocum name. It's, it's, it's uh, something that's conservative, been around for a while in these parts. So I really would appreciate your vote. And John's a great guy. I would vote for him in a New York second if I lived here. <laughs> For the next section, each candidate will have seven minutes. We have our official time keeper right here. She will hold up a yellow folder with one minute on it to let you know you're almost out of time, and then a red folder, and it'll start beeping when you're out of time. So please finish up in your seven minutes. We have a lot of speakers today. Remember, this is not a question and answer session, but you can write down your questions and ask them afterwards. I'm going to ask the candidates to line up when the one before them is about to finish so we can keep, our, keep going. Uh, first is going to be Louis Gomer, and then Clint Morgan, James White, Mark Bowlby, Sid Miller, Victor Davila, Kerry Council, Ken Paxton, Dr. John Spears, and then Wayne Christian. So when the candidate before you comes up, just be ready over here so we can keep things going. All right, Louis Gomer is going to kick this off. Yeah. Did you say Louis Gomer was going to take us off? <laughs> <laughs> All right, good. Hey, I'm thrilled to be here. Always good to get back to Aggie Land. And, uh, you know, I was telling John was with me about when I was at AM, we'd come to Ryan for a place called Mama's. And if I had come tonight, I would not have seen Jerry Ward. I had not seen her since I left Aggieland in May of 75. Wow. But look, it uh, is crunch time. Some of you have already asked, you know, why would you leave Congress and run for attorney general? Uh, well, there would have to be a good reason. Yeah. I normally win around 75% of the vote, it's been higher, but um, I couldn't believe there wasn't more being done from the Attorney General's office to stop election fraud. Uh, there was some indictment, some smaller level, but I didn't see the big stuff that could throw an election. And I believe if, if we don't win the White House in 24, I think our republic is done. The, the stuff that's going on in Washington right now, I was talking about Ted Cruz this, uh, this morning in Washington. I mean, it is incredible. There is, it's basically already turning into a dictatorship. It is in Congress, and we're seeing it from whoever's running things from the White House. Uh, and I'm going to be nice to Biden. I don't think he knows what's going on, but 
but somebody's running things and somebody's creating a lot of problems. And they think Trump is going to be a dictator? No, no. It's them taking over as dictators. So they say we can avoid having somebody like Trump as president. But there is not a path to being president as a Republican unless you win Texas. So securing the election is absolutely critical. And I know the court of appeal said the uh, attorney general can't prosecute election fraud. We've got to get that fixed. Yeah. And I've talked to a bunch of legislators. We need to fix the law. We need to pass an amendment, do it. And also in pushing for the legislature to pass a, an organized crime bill, kind of like RICO in the federal government, uh, so that the attorney general can go after that wherever it is. And there's plenty in our four biggest counties that are handled by DAs that are not interested in pursuing serious crime, whether it's election, fraud, whatever. The other problem is our border. You cannot keep a republic, as Franklin talked about, unless you can control your borders. Now, under Wood, uh, Woodrow Wilson as president, there may be four dozen or so people came with Pancho Villa, they crossed into New Mexico, killed some Americans, and Woodrow Wilson says, and he was like one of my least favorite presidents, but he said that's an invasion. And he sent John Pershing in the army chasing after Pancho Villa and his men. Never called Pancho, but he caught a bunch of lieutenants and they ended that stuff. Well, we got two million a year coming in from our across our southern border, and it's being done. It's all orchestrated by the drug cartels, and now we got drug cartels set up all over Texas. This is serious stuff, and this election can be stolen in Texas. And you may have seen the meme: "What's the difference between conspiracy theories and facts?" About six months, I think. It's more like a year. Uh, it's taken about. A year, remember a year ago, people said there was no fraud in that election, no secure election. Now there's a lot of fraud, and it's coming out now. But we cannot afford to lose the election in 24. So I felt like, and after seven top people in the AG's office sent a letter to the FBI, the FBI's got corruption, the OJ's got corruption. You imagine how thrilled they were to have seven people of intelligence and integrity hired to the top offices in the AG's office, and they complain about the Attorney General committing felonies and that he needs to be prosecuted. Uh, you know they had to be thrilled. They should have come back and done something last fall, but they're going to wait till after the primary and hope that they can throw the election to the Democrat in November. We cannot afford to have anything but a fighter, somebody that's a prosecutor. And I never even dreamed about it, never thought about being AG, but as I got to the point, somebody's got to do something. and. It, the two, um, I like Eva Guzman and George P. Bush, nice guys, but I look back at my life, I didn't see it, but I was I believe I was being prepared for this day, this time, for such time. A fighter that will, I have to come back from Washington. I feel like I've got to do this, but I can't do it without your help. <laughs> And I can clean up this state. The only time the Dallas News was ever been nice to me was when I was six years old. <laughs> and I grew up in Mount Pleasant, and I never understood why they would thought this was amusing. But a lady asked, when I was six, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I said, a fine Christian sheriff. And they printed that in the Dallas News. My sister's the only Democrat in her family, and she said, after I announced, I didn't talk to her about it before. She said, you may have that chance to finally be the fine Christian sheriff. I want to say, Texas, I'm willing to risk this. This will end my political career if I'm not successful. But I have to try because I see it all on the line. It's very clear to me. And I'm coming back to fight for Texas 
so that Texas can save the union. Thank you. All. I'm very grateful to True Texas Project for endorsing me over the other two <laughs> uh, Howdy. 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 I'm not an Aggie, I just like to say <laughs> uh, My name is Cliff Morgan, I'm a career prosecutor out of Houston, and I am running for the Court of Criminal Appeals. So what is the Court of Criminal Appeals? In Texas, our trial, our court system has three levels. We've got trial courts down here, and you all know what happens there. And then above them, if you don't like what happens at trial, you appeal to the courts of appeal. And there's 14 of them spread across the state. Those are local courts of appeals. You all go to Waco here. That's a solid, court of, solid Republican court of appeal. Um, and then above the courts of appeals, if you don't like what happens there, if you're in a civil case, you go to the Supreme Court, and if you're in a criminal case, you go to the Court of Criminal Appeals. So it is our state's highest court for criminal cases. It is a statewide office, uh, and it is above the Court of Appeals. Now, I am running for the Court of Criminal Appeals because I believe we are having a crisis of crime in this state. And what we should respond to it the way Republicans responded to the last crisis of crime in the 90s, and that is with law and order. So what does that look like from this position? All right, now we like to think this is a nice Republican state, but the reality is in 2018, the Democrats took over most of our big city courts of appeals. They took over Dallas and Austin and Houston uh, and San Antonio. And it's not just that they're Democrats, we've got a lot of activists on these courts. Um, and there's a lot of unjust reversals going on. Uh, I've seen it in, 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 in Houston. I've lost more cases on appeal in two years under Democrat judges than I did in six years under Republican judges, and it's not the law that changed. Uh, and that's going on in the other courts of appeals as well. So we've got a lot of activism going on in the courts of appeals. We need our Republican judges at the top of the structure to be extra productive, to grant review of more cases, to, great, to issue opinions faster, because we have got to keep these activists in check if we are going to have law and order in this state. So how do I do that? For nine and a half years, I have been the most productive appellate prosecutor in Harris County, probably the whole state. I've written about 400 briefs. Um, I've been lead counsel in about 300 cases. I'm now on the 17th case at the Court of Criminal Appeals. These are all very high towards the top of the numbers for the whole state. Um, I am board certified in criminal appellate law. When I worked at the court 10 years ago, for, for two years, the judge I worked for wrote the most opinions during those two years. I saw up close what it takes to be an effective and productive judge who cranks out opinions, gets them out quickly, and assembles uh, a, an agreement among the court. So what I am challenging a Republican incumbent, you heard from him earlier, he offered excuses as to why he writes, and I'm not making this up, four opinions a year. I told you my judge wrote 17 opinions the first year I was there, 20 the next. Judge Walker has averaged four opinions per year over the first five years of his term. I don't think that's acceptable. I don't think that's a record that deserves re-election. I don't think that's the pace that we need this court to be going at if we want to keep the activists in check. Yes. So that's why I am running for this court. We need it to move fast. He's saying the court's not broken. I don't know if the court's broken. What I know is he writes fewer opinions than any judge in the recorded history of this court. Everybody else in the court right now writes almost twice as many, more than twice as many, one writes three times as many. He's dragging things down. You want things to move quick, you want things to move slow. I think we need to fix our crisis of crime by reigning in the activists with an assertive court that gets things back under control. Now, I am a career prosecutor. Judge Walker was a career defense attorney before he joined the court. We have a difference in philosophy when it comes to the criminal law of this state. He is the judge who is most likely to vote with criminal defendants. I can't find an instance of him ever dissenting to a case where a defendant won. I am a prosecutor. I'm going to apply the law. We're going to protect defendants' rights, but we're not going to make up new ones. That's my pledge to you. Now, a little bit about me. I am, uh, my wife and I moved to Texas. Uh, we didn't work born here, we got here as soon as we could. Went to grad school, went to law school at UT. She went to grad school, she has a PhD. I told you I worked for two years at the Court of Criminal Appeals. Then I went to Houston. My wife, an amazing woman, you should hear a little bit about her. I, she's, bless her, she's at home. 
tending to four children while I'm just roaming the state talking to conservative <laughs> voters, so I've got the better end of that. Uh, she's got a PhD, she runs a consulting firm, she's COO of a new biotech startup, and she's now homeschooling our oldest child, who is five. She just gave birth in December, and she's wrangling all of this while I just drive around. So she is truly fantastic. <laughs> So um, I think that's that's most of what I've got here. A news update on the Court of Criminal Appeals. It does not often make news, as Louie was describing to you back in December. This court, eight Republican judges, including Judge Walker, joined an opinion that keeps the Attorney General from enforcing election laws in this state. That's now relegated to the local county attorneys and district attorneys. Um, that is a new opinion from the court, and that's a thing that is done. So, um, on that note, I think I'm going to go ahead and let you all have the rest of your time back. My name is Clint Morgan. Uh, just a, I'll run through my endorsements since I got a little bit of time here. Uh, I've got seven out of seven from True Texas Project. Uh, I've got a lot of other grassroots organizations. I got East Texans for Liberty. I've got uh, uh, Kingwood Tea Party. I got uh, Grassroots America, We the People, I got United Texas, I've got CLEAT, Combined Law Enforcement Associations of Texas. I simply told law enforcement associations that I was running against Judge Walker and they came into my corner immediately. Because mm -hmm. they know that we need more law and order in this state. I've got the Houston Police Officers Union, the San Antonio Police Officers Union. I've got Texas Right to Life. If that is important to you, I am your man. Um, and so check out my page, clintforjudge.com. It's got all my endorsements there. It's got my judicial philosophy there. It's got the donate button. <laughs> uh, but you can learn more about me, and I appreciate your time. I'll be here all evening. So thank you. Club Morgan. deep dive audit. The reason they call it sunset is if you're not needed anymore, the sun sets on you and never comes up. <laughs> so uh, we just got ours done this last year and the sunset commission, this is third party verification, not me saying it, said the Texas Department of Agriculture was the best run state agency they had ever reviewed. Woo! So we're, we're proud of our people for that. On another note, before the election, uh, President Trump asked me to serve in his cabinet going to be some cabinet changes after the uh, election, uh, but I had to go through an FBI background check. So I spent eight weeks, six different FBI agents, uh, checked me out. Amazing thing was I actually passed. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but if there's anything uh, unethical or shady in my background, my name would have been withdrawn from uh, consideration. Um, you know, in our department, just a few things, I don't have much time, but when I got there, it's taken 12 years to inspect all the fuel pumps. One out of five times when you pulled up the pump, it was ripping you off. We got that fixed. We got those pumps inspected every 12 months. I even instituted a car, credit card skimmer program, and we shut those credit card skimmers down. You don't hear much about that anymore. We, we worked on that. Uh, we did the same thing on the scales. We took the scales and found 7,000 businesses operating illegally. We got those all, all in compliance for you. Our Go Texas program is our marketing program. We built that up from about 250 members to over 2,500. Uh, I launched a global outreach initiative. So first 12 months, me and one of my executive staff was on every continent on the globe marketing Texas products. Been so successful that I have an office in Argentina now to serve as Central and South America. We do a big business there in animal genetics. We have our own TV show, the only ag department in the United States. 
told him tonight we're missing it right now. <laughs> he comes on at 6 p.m. on the RFD TV network. That's the agriculture channel from get in. It's called Texas Agriculture Matters. It's kind of uh, patterned it after uh, Bob Phillips' Texas Country Report. We go around the state showcasing everything that's good about Texas and Texas agriculture. We also have our own NASCAR team. A lot of our members target the NASCAR crowd for their products, so we've got our own, own racing team there. Um, you know, I was endorsed by Donald Trump, a lot of the other leading conservatives, most of the ag culture groups, most of the conservative groups, uh, and, and using all those, I'm not going to go into those, you go to our website and look, look those up. Uh, but what, what, what we've uh, uh, been doing since then is, you know, everybody thinks that the ag commission is just supposed to be about cow, sows, and plows, uh, right? <laughs> but I want to tell you, I'm the only statewide official in Austin that's holding establishment accountable. When Governor Abbott extended early, unconstitutionally extended early voting the third week so they could continue to cheat, I sued long ago. <laughs> Even though Governor Abbott had put out executive order that there would be no mask on any state property required, the Texas Senate, on the leadership of Dan Patrick, not only did they require you to have a mask, but they made you stand outside in the cold for 30 minutes and take a COVID test. Yeah. Well, I sued Dan Patrick and all 31 senators. <laughs> came out with pandemic relief for farmers, and to qualify, you had, the only way you could qualify is if your skin was dark. Yeah. I sued him. That's unconstitutional. And I won. <laughs> when the legislature wouldn't do their job and ban gender modification of minors, really? I was on the steps of the Capitol holding a press conference demanding that they do their job and pass a law to prohibit gender modification of minors. That's just sick. <laughs> in the third special session, the last week, when the legislature still hadn't passed the bill to ban uh, vaccine mandates, I was one holding a press conference demanding that Governor Abbott call a fourth special session mm -hmm. to address the vaccine mandate situation to actually outlaw it. So I'm there working hard for you. Sorry, Wayne, but I hope you hope y'all will agree that I'm the hardest working, hardest hitting, hardest driving statewide elected official you've got. So I'm gonna ask, ask for your vote tonight. Check us out at SidMiller.com, Facebook, follow us there. We have a huge following, the largest of anybody, Facebook slash Miller for Texas. Thank you. God bless us. Good to be with you.
I'm a, I'm, like I said, I'm a Texas Aggie. I'm also, I got my master's degree at Sam Houston. I'm a professor at Blaine College. I've been at Blaine College for 20 years. So I've been working with people. What qualifies me for this position is I've been a business owner for years and years and years. I've also worked with Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo. And if you've ever worked with about 1,200 volunteers at the same pay grade, it's like herding cats. Yeah, it's, it's everybody's going the wrong direction. Um, I'm not going to dwell too much about it, but I'm going to encourage you and ask you to, to do your research on Commissioner Miller. There's been some indictments and Texas ethic violations and, 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 and so some issues. You know, he's been a career politician. I'm not a career politician. I'm a rancher. I'm an Aggie. I'm a veteran. I'm a, career, I'm a career farmer. I'm one of you. I just decided I didn't like what I was seeing in the Texas Department of Agriculture, and it's time to put my hat in the ring. We need change. People are tired of not having to, the control of their money. Uh, I mentioned this the other day. Uh, why do we have a NASCAR? Commissioner Miller, why was there a NASCAR? Why couldn't we put that money back into 4-H and FFA projects? Why couldn't we protect our next generation? We need to make sure we encourage the next generation of farmers and ranchers. That's important. China is buying our land in Texas, and they're not doing anything about it. Not doing anything. We need to stop Chinese from buying the land. There's been eight, mark my word, eight states in the United States that prevent that. Texas is not one of them. So here we are, leader. Here we are, a follower instead of a leader. So I'm tired of Texas being a follower. I'm tired of Texas squandering your money. I think Texas Department of Agriculture, Commissioner Miller, you did a great job with the Agriculture Department. I think they're a great organization, but it's time for change of leadership. Commissioner Miller came from uh, the uh, state rep and came into the Agriculture Department. He's a career politician. The other one running for office has never owned any, he does, he's not in agriculture. I am the true agriculture, I'm a true Aggie, I'm in the business, I can hit the ground running, I got endorsements from the feedlots, I got endorsements, I got uh, support from all over the agriculture industry. He's been there for seven years and you don't see all the agriculture industries endorsing him. It's time for change. My name is Kerry Council, Council across Texas, this blue card. I'm all about inflationary spending. Do I have a little bit more time? Oh, okay. I'm all about lowering the cost. You're paying two, the two biggest items that everybody takes care of that, that affects everybody in this room, your fuel and your food. What's that done over the last year? Fuel has gone up 50%. Food has gone up 22, 20, 21, 22%. This needs to be addressed. And it's being addressed right now. There's four major packing houses that supply 85% of the meat to the end of the United States. There is a program coming out in the Panhandle right now. It's called the Co-op Program. And this co-op program is farmer, rancher owned. And what we'll do, what it will do in time, raise the price of the ranchers because they'll have an investment in it. It will lower the price to you. We need to cut the middleman out. We need to let people know what you can do to save money and what will benefit you in your pocket. People are getting tired. I know no one in here has got a 20% raise in the same job. So it's time for change. It's time to, time to wake up. It's time to let you know your money is important to you. We don't need to have it on NASCAR. We need to have it in your pocket. We need to give it back to you. We need to invest in your kids or grandkids. We need to invest back into agriculture. We're losing ranchers and farmers on a daily basis. And we can't have that. Who's going to feed us? If you think that you're not involved in agriculture, you're not wearing clothes and you're hungry. Every single person in here is involved in agriculture. If you eat and you clothe, you're involved in agriculture. What happened last February? It's no good, right? What happens when the water stops? What happens when the water stops? We're all in trouble. We're going to use 17% more water in the next five years. Where's it going to come from? We need to know. I'm all about desalinization. Catch it before it hits the Gulf of Mexico. We, have, we can desalinize that water and bring that water back up to, up to, up to the big cities. <clears throat> they say, make up based on budgeting, we have more people coming to Texas based on the budget of what we've done in the past. Do you think that's accurate? Elon Musk is coming in here and bringing California to Texas people. They're coming, whether we like it or not. Where are they going to live? They're going to live in our area. They're going to live in the Brazos Valley. They're going to live in this area. They're going to live, we're at commutable distance to Houston. Two, uh, there's a sign that was around here years ago. 90% uh, of all Texans live within 250 miles from Bryan College Station. Did you know that? 90% of all Texans, where are they going to live? 
right here, right here in Brazos Valley, because you're close to everything. So we need to make sure we, we protect our water. We need to make sure we keep the Chinese or the all foreigners from buying our Texas land. And we need to control inflationary spending. <clears throat> Please support me, Terry Council, the Texas Ag Commissioner. I'm the real deal. Thank you. Thank you. Kim Paxton. Not here. No, here ain't no. I'll speak for him. I'm John Spires. My name is always mispronounced. Somewhere that tells me somewhere in my history my family didn't know how to hear. They didn't know how to spell my first name because it left out an H. They knew how to pronounce my last name because it's Spires. I'm ready to be your Texas land commissioner. If you're like most folks, you say, okay, we've got a railroad commissioner who doesn't do anything about railroads. We've got an agriculture commissioner who does things about agriculture. What exactly does the land commission do? Well, that's a good question because it's the most misunderstood office that touches everyone in Texas's life. Did you know that you own 13 million acres? 13 million acres to give you an idea of just how big that is. Joe Biden is from this little state. It's a sample size state <laughs> called Delaware. <laughs> You take Delaware and you multiply it by eight. That is the size of your ranch here in Texas, your public land here in Texas. 13 million acres. We use that 13 million acres to raise money for the permanent school fund so that children can get a good education, so that we can make sure that they have good textbooks and good technology. That 13 million acres is used for oil and gas. We have rare earth elements on that 13 million acres. There's a country called China that wants to buy our rare earth elements, right? Not, not going to happen. We have a mountain in West Texas, a mountain with several billion dollars worth of rare earth elements in it, Hudson County. By managing that land for our school children, what is one of the big goals that we have? Because what do you hear every year when it comes tax time? Need more money. We've got to get money for the schools. Well, we can raise more money on our permanent school fund land than you think. Maybe your taxes could go down. Promise me you'll hold our legislature accountable for that because we're going to try to raise as much money as possible for the permanent school fund so there is no excuse your taxes should go down. Okay? We have two million acres that are offshore. Two million acres. We go out 10.35 miles. Other states can't do that. That's one of the perks of being a nation. We kept all of our land. And we use that to develop some projects that are going to offset some of the challenges facing our oil and gas industry. They tell us that we have to lower our carbon footprint. Well, I'm not sure I agree on all of that, but I do know that if we can make money for Texas and get them off the back of our oil and gas industry, it sounds like a pretty good idea. And so we've got folks that are looking at ways we can lower the carbon footprint of Texas using this offshore land that we're not using for anything else. I think that's a winner. How many of you have heard about this little fort, a mission actually, in San Antonio, that some people want to reimagine? Because, you know, the last time I checked, Texas history was not imaginary. And so we didn't need to reimagine it. It's very real. And we're not going to reimagine the Alamo. The land office has done a poor job stewarding our greatest landmark, the beacon of liberty that shines brightest around the world. Because wherever you go and people find out you're a Texan, some of the first words they're going to say to you are, remember the Alamo. We're going to remember the Alamo, folks. We're going to remember real Texas history, and we're going to protect that every day. A few weeks back, someone at the land office got this wise idea that it was costing money 
to take care of our veteran cemeteries. It was costing too much money. It was not a good money-making venture to have veteran cemeteries. Folks, in Texas, we honor the men and women who have sacrificed so that we can live free. We will always honor the men and women who have sacrificed so that we can live free. And as your land commissioner, every day we will make certain that that is front and center. And it's not just at the cemeteries. We have veterans care homes we provide nursing care for our veterans as they advance in years. Specialized care. We're going to expand that program. We have the Veterans Land Board, which makes land available to veterans to help them build their Texas dream. It's not been real competitive. We're going to fix that. We also face a challenge on our southern board. You've heard it over and over. You know it to be true. 591,000 plus acres belong to you along our southern border. We can build a wall system, not just a wall, but a wall system on that land. That's the easy part. But at the land office, we're accustomed to leasing land, and landowners don't like to have their land taken. See, I'm not a big fan of eminent domain. So what I propose that we do is we say, hey, look, we're going to build a wall up to your property, and we would love to lease land from you to build this across your property. And you have the right to say no. We'll go around you. Now, something tells me that if we go around them and we start start that process, they're going to rethink it as the traffic's coming through their land. They're going to say, wait a minute. I want to revisit this idea. But we want to give them that option because it is their land. It belongs to them. We're going to do that. Now, why am I the guy for this job? Because if you looked in your seat, you see this thing that says, John Spire, surgeon, attorney, and veteran. Yeah, I'm a heart surgeon. I got hurt. I did what heart surgeons always do when they have one hand. They find something else. <laughs> I lost the ability to operate, but I knew I had to continue to contribute. I served in our armed forces as a, as a surgeon. I became an attorney so that I could continue to fight for Texans. I fight against government overreach. And I will fight for you as your land commissioner every day. My wife's in the audience. I want you to meet her. I wish our boy could have been here. He's got some engineering lab tonight, and he tells me classwork is more important than here at the hall. <laughs> I think that's probably a good thing. But I appreciate the opportunity to speak to all of y'all. I'm John Spires, running the Beaver, Texas Land Commissioner. Please come and talk to me. I'd love to answer your questions. God bless you, and God bless the great state of Texas. Thank you. Now we have uh, Wayne Christian. <laughs> I'm the one you've been waiting on. That's the last <laughs> one on the program. <laughs> My name is Wayne Christian. I am the only Christian on the ballot. So I am the current chair of the Texas Federal Commission. It's an honor to be here. I'm a hero. You're the heroes. I mean, a politician, look at all the guts and glory of this thing and get, uh, get credit and all that stuff. And I, I, I want to give credit to my good Lord for anything that I'm out there. It's kind of funny. Uh, my, my, my opponent, God bless him, has got a couple of things that he's used on his. I want to thank, thank Mr. Slocum for, for putting my name on his brochure. It's always neat to be the guy you compare it to, right? And uh, he mentioned that uh, one thing he put that's very incorrect is Wayne Christian calls securitization the $3.0 billion tax. Uh, I didn't know what securitization even was, so I didn't call it anything. Securitization is not passed by the Railroad Commission. It's a law passed by the legislature of $3.4 billion that we were told to implement. It is not a tax. It is saying that the big money that was, when we had the windstorm and all the prices went up on natural gas on the markets one day and we had to buy it for a jillion dollars, if there's a law in the state of Texas, no gas company can profit from that. They just have to pay it. So consumers all over the state, when a gas bill had to pay like uh, $1,000 for one month and thousand for that increase in prices that nobody can make profits on. The Texas legislature passed the bill that said we're going to spread over 30 years. San Antonio paper said it's going to cost about a dollar and a quarter a month now instead of a thousand or six hundred dollars for families. 
it wasn't anything we did, so that it is incorrect. Uh, and uh, I, I'm glad that he talks about that he's not going to let any water uh, improve an oil field, landfill in any place in East Texas where there's rivers and, and water. And uh, uh, sorry, I was the legislator for 14 years over the largest inland water supply in the United States, including being in San Marino. I know a little bit about keeping water clean. I represent the Sandy River Authority. And if you don't have injection and disposal of those folks, you don't have oil and gas. I'm the guy that's supposed to help get more oil and gas for my 30 million citizens who allowed me to represent them in Texas. I want to continue to drill, baby, drill. We've had too much crap from the federal government of Biden, Al Gore, AOC, and all that bunch. I'm the guy that passed a resolution in the 31 state of the United States that said we are against the Green New Deal, we're against the Clean Air Act, and all this other stuff that is the biggest scam on the American taxpayer in the history of the world. We have a better land. The last 99 years, we've decreased environmental deaths by 99% the past 100 years. The past 50 years, the EPA says we have decreased all the poisonous gases by the EPA by 77%. You don't hear any of this. I'm the guy that's going to come to the Wall Street Journal after the storm. You don't remember the storm, Yuri? I was five and a half days and three sets of clothes without electricity or heat, but I had natural gas. Okay? Guess what? The Railroad Commission doesn't regulate electricity. We regulate the natural gas. Jerry Yuri, 99.5% of the folks that needed natural gas or propane turned on the valve, they got it. The Railroad Commission delivered. Let me tell you, and people talk about what's happening in Texas. We're the only state in the union, once you know this, that you don't pay the lowest spot market price for electricity. We're the only people in the nation. You know why? Because we have a state law. Our legislature passed it. We, we want to be the wind capital of the world. Guess what? We'll be. We're with the wind capital. We pay China for 60% of the windows and solar panels. With your tax dollar might bring them over, stick them up, and talk about how we're cleaning up the environment. Okay? I'm sick of it. I'm the guy that goes around. Oh, by the way, I have a Wall Street Journal. I'm just a Wall Street Journal publishing me on my forum on what I said about the windstorm and the storm we had on Storm Europe. What happened? We spent so much of your and my tax dollars on wind and solar garbage that were unreliable, went from 28% to zero electricity during the storm. And natural gas went from 48 to 70%. We spent so much time and money of our tax dollars on wind and solar, we let the power line go out on reliable energy. And we're sitting right here now, I guarantee you, unless we change the law, and I'm working with the legislature, I talked to Luther Cove two nights ago, and we've got to fix an amendment that was dropped in the house that says we no longer are going to provide a guaranteed purchase to wind and solar in Texas like we do today. Uh, we have been discovered, y'all, we discovered the largest discovery in the history of the world we're now in Texas. We went from 40% of the national production of oil and gas in Texas and in the United States to now we're 60%. 30% of the budget in the state of Texas we have is oil and gas. 30% of the budget, that's what we're talking about, the Railroad Commission Office. We're talking about one out of ten jobs. We're talking about all the rainy day fund allows Texas to be Texas and to snub our nose at the federal government when they said you gotta do this and don't get our money. And guess what they're trying to shut down? The greenies, you're talking about who's fighting the greenies and this stuff? The greenies on, 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 on a uh, conference call said that Wayne Christian was the worst enemy in the state of Texas to the green energy deal. I'm the number one enemy. I was also I was named three of my four sessions in the legislature, the, one of the top ten worst legislators by Texas Monday. <laughs> I'm honored and proud to be able to serve. Let me tell you, we, we have a lot to fight for and a lot that's coming against us. A lot of us, the big oil and gas companies in Texas won't put on the big boy and girl bridges and go fight for what's right. You've got legislators everywhere that are saying, we're for all the above energy. Bull. We are not for dirty, unproductive uh, uh, oil and uh, oil and gas product, anti-oil and gas product like wind and solar that cannot even produce when we have trouble. My name is Wayne Christian. I would appreciate the honor of giving your vote. I am honored to be endorsed by almost every oil and gas group. Uh, the Texas Oil and Gas, Texoga, Tempro, uh, all the oil and gas royalty owners, the Texas Right to Life, uh, Farm Bureau, and uh, most honorable by Judy McCartney, and, and she and I worked back when she, she was Tarrant County Tea Party Chairman. I spoke at the first tea party 
in the entire state of Texas on the out front of Peggy Venable, and uh, this person going to get over. And I'm honored to be endorsed personally by Julie and, and also by uh, Texas, a uh, true Texas project, project as I'm your endorsed candidate, your recommended candidate, and I'm honored to be with you in that and to have received your organization's uh, 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 recommendation. Thank you so much for what you do, and thank you for being here. You're the folks that can save Texas. Get out and vote past the word for the only Christian. <laughs> Man alive. A lot of good speakers tonight. We've been handed a gift. Um, and I would have loved to hear from some of the people who uh, said they were going to be able to come but weren't able for one reason or another. But that means that we have more time to talk to the candidates that are here. So the room is ours. We have it as long as we need this evening. So I hope you sit around, ask these candidates uh, questions, talk about what's on your mind. Thank you for coming. We thank you to the candidates, especially those who traveled a long way, for being with us tonight. And do not forget the primaries. Early voting coming up real soon. Y'all have a good night. God bless.